blessed morning to you. I, I really like the Chinese song that was that we have learned just now. Wow,这个蛮喜欢刚才我们所唱的那首华语的歌,歌颂辅助华,辅华的主,歌颂辅华的主。世上有哪一位主为你死,为你复活? Uh, 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 so I like the songs, and I think it's a we thank God for such hymn to remind us of uh, God's great love for us. So we really like that song. It reminds us of God's great love for us. Now, when I was preparing this message, uh, there was a great event that happened somewhere in February. When I was preparing this message, uh, there was a great event that happened somewhere in February. When I was preparing this message, there was a great event that happened the massive earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria happened on the 7th of February. Now, it was very clear at the time that immediate response was very critical so that lives can be saved. Everybody was rushing. Time was critical. Thousands of children and families were at risk after experiencing two devastating earthquakes and then several aftershocks. Of course, we know world bodies like UN, EU, the WHO all responded. Other nations also responded to help. Now, initially, the focus was on search and rescue operation. Then there was uh, emphasis on relief aids to help those who are displaced, uh, caught in the disasters, caught in that very cold winter. Never was response time so critical and so well. Emphasize. But thank God, many uh, have responded to the call for, to help and to send relief. Earthquake, what has it got to do with the resurrection of Jesus? Do you know there was mention of earthquake both at the death? and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Except there wasn't destruction, but, but it was saving of lives. Look at uh, Matthew 27, uh, verse 50 to 53. Verse 51, Verse 51, Matthew 27 says, The earth did quake, the rocks rent. That, that means there was a shaking of the earth, the ground. And then there was a mention that the grave were open. When the ground was shaken, the grave were opened. And many bodies of the saints, that means the dead saints, rose. But verse 53 says, out of the grave after his resurrection. Ah. And these saints went out to the holy city and appear unto many. Now, the appearance 
uh, came after on the third day. And if you look at Matthew 28 that we have just read, verse 2 also talks about a grave, a great earthquake. And after the earthquake, the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Was there destruction? No, look carefully. The, the, but when, when the angel descended, the stone that was uh, concealing Jesus, the stone was rolled away. And this is a very momentous moment. Indeed, Christ has risen three days or within three days of his death on the cross. That was a very important, uh, great prophecy fulfilled. And that earthquake seems to uh, announced that Christ has risen. Then the raising of the saints seems like another miracle. So you must imagine on the uh, resurrection morning, this event shook the earth. So we can go back to the earth. The spectacular has happened. Yet not all believe. Now when you look at the earthquake of Turkey and Syria, it struck as a tragedy. It's a very tragic event uh, that so many lives were lost. But so was the death of Christ very gruesome on the cross. It looks like he has failed in his mission. But he was never meant to be a failure. Because three days later, later he rose again victoriously. And we know that his resurrection means he has conquered death. And that's why we celebrate and say that Jesus indeed has risen. In the earthquake disaster, they emphasized that within the 72 hours, it was important to the saving of lives. It is said that uh, this 72 hours was critical to the saving of life those, for those who are trapped in the Rebels and the fallen buildings and the structures. But it did not take our Lord 72 hours. Even before that, He rose again. No one could keep Him on the, uh, in the grave. And when the Lord rose again, uh, prophecy was fulfilled. Now, there's three things that we need to note about the resurrection of Christ. Now, after the, the death on the cross and been witnessed by all, uh, most were not expecting the resurrection to take place. Uh, even the disciples were very fearful. Yet also, we also see 
even before the resurrection of Christ, the Jewish chief were ready to guard the tomb. Now, this is he had not yet found him dead. They were ready to guard the tomb. They wanted to play safe, just in case Jesus rose again. They wanted to check if Jesus rose again. So they were skimming away. They were ready with us to tell the world a lie. So they tell the they were they told the guards that if anything of such happened, they are to blame it on the disciples. He said, "Tell the guards that if such a thing happened, they are to blame it on the disciples." Blame it on them that they have stolen the body of Jesus. They want to say because they have stolen his body. We know the Jewish leaders were outrightly denying the possibility even of the resurrection of Christ. So, at that time, those Jewish leaders, they also wanted to not accept the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we know nothing could hinder or prevent Christ. From raising from the dead. 但是我们知道，不，世界没有任何东西可以阻挡主耶稣基督的复活。The most they could do was to deny it, to spread lies, to cause confusion. 他们唯一可以做的就是说，要这个说这个谎言。And on the resurrection morning, after the announcement by the earthquake, the angels declared, "He is not here. He has he has risen." 所以当他的的复活的时候。天使已经告诉他们，他不在这里，他已复活了。And we see that time was also critical. 那我们看到这个时间的观念也是很重要的。It was critical that uh the believers were told of the truth of Christ's resurrection. 因为信主的人必须要知道与关于主的复活。Otherwise, they would have heard the lie that was passing around. 因不然的话，他们可能会听自己所要。The Lord was concerned that his disciples must be the first to receive the good news that Christ indeed has risen. So, he told them to make sure that his disciples got the first news that he had risen. And they were also having heard to declare and to publish the good news of the resurrection. So, they heard and they also had to publish the good news of the resurrection. And the Lord also was very concerned that they must be encouraged. So, he also was very concerned that they must be that they need not fear because of the death of Christ. They must not be afraid because of the death of Christ. But the Lord indeed has risen. Because the Lord has indeed risen. What do we do with all this news? That we hear about this news, what do we do? In the passage of Matthew 28, I think there are, I see there are three responses. That when we read this passage, I see there are three responses. That when we read this passage, I think there are three responses. That when we read this passage, I see there are three responses. First, we see how Mary Magdalene and the other Mary responded. That the other we see how Mary Magdalene and the other Mary responded. We also see in the passage how the chief priest responded. That we also see in the passage how the chief priest responded. And in the final two three verses of Matthew twenty eight, we see how we should respond. 那接下来的马太福音的二十八章的最后几节，看到我们人怎样回应。Now time was critical, uh, so that people are not misled. 那时间观念是很重要的，所以不要等到他们人他们就是被这些谎言所误导了。As critical as saying that the seventy-two hours, uh, after the earthquake in Turkey and Syria was important, it is important that we spread the good news of Christ. 就比如在刚才我们讲的，在叙利亚，他们在七十二小时之内，他们要拯救更多的人。然后现在时间很关键，我们要去传福音。And we are not talking about destruction. We are talking, we are spreading the good news of the resurrection of Christ. 哇，这个不是我们是关于毁坏，但是我们要传的是耶稣基督的复活。We want to spread the good news of the saving of souls. 我们要传扬的是。Let's look at first the woman's response. 那首先我们要看到妇女的啊回应。When Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary arrived at the tomb, they were greeted by the angels. 当啊莫达勒的玛利亚和其他玛利亚他们去到坟墓的时候
We see uh, verse 2 records the great earthquake, but not of destruction, but the earthquake came like a great announcement. Indeed, when Christ comes, that is some earth shaking event. And when he arose, that is something spectacular. It announced that death could not keep our Lord bound in the tomb. Christ has performed the greatest miracle of all, the conquest over death. And so we see how uh, the women, of course, were terrified. But the angels said to the Lord, Do not be afraid, for, for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. Uh, the women thought they would be coming to see a Savior that was be, uh, crucified and bound, still bound. But they were greeted with the good news. Verse, 20, verse 6, He is not here, for He has risen. And it's not just said. The, the angel said, Come, see the place where He lay. This is a gracious invitation. I don't know how we will respond to such an invitation to enter and inspect a tomb. Some of us, some of us the thought of going to a cemetery already scares you. Now you are invited to go to a tomb. But it's an empty tomb. Thank God it's an empty tomb. But with the witness of the empty tomb, there comes an instruction. The angel said, Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. Another thing, and behold, he, Jesus, the risen Christ, is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. Go quickly and tell his disciples, you must sense the urgency there. And that's why it's recorded, go quickly, tell the disciples. Go immediately. Then, go, wh why do we go? Next is the message. Tell the disciples that Jesus has risen. So there's urgency, there's the message to be told. And besides urgency, message, we thank God there's also assurance there. There you will see him. Look at the verse. There you will see him. There is assurance that the message is true. Today I hope we will respond to the, with the same. There must be urgency to tell that Jesus has risen. Our message must be clear. Jesus indeed has risen. And you must have the assurance that when you trust in this Lord, you will see Him. And if you look at verse 8 to 10, it's like a repeat, except this time it was the Lord Jesus who met the woman. The same word will use, go and tell. So, 
dear brethren, today the Lord might, might be telling you and me the same message. Go and tell. 亲爱的，弟兄们，今天可能主也是向我，向你跟我说，去告诉人。Share the message of my resurrection. And what about the resurrection? We share the reality and the power of the resurrection to transform life. Right? We do not hold this message only to ourselves. The instruction is clear. We are to go and tell. Go, do it with urgency. Tell the clear message, Jesus has risen. Testify that he, has, he lives, and indeed he lives within our hearts. That he is real. Today we need not go to Galilee. Christ has risen and ascended to heaven. But someday he will come back for us. Someday we will witness his glorious return. Go and tell is a very fitting response that we must adopt this Easter. Jesus has risen. We are living proof that He lives in us. And we must carry the message to all. Don't be busy, too busy telling any other stories. Even though your stories might sound very inspiring, don't be tempted to tell the lies that the soldiers and the guards they were bribed by the chief priests and leaders to tell another story. We tell the truth of Christ's resurrection because we are the disciples of Christ. Why go to tell uh, the message? Why the agency? Because many of them has, must have felt very disheartened at the crucifixion of Jesus. The past two days before the resurrection and after the crucifixion must have been the darkest hours of some of these frightened and saddened disciples. So I suspect the very first objective of telling, going to tell was to encourage and uplift the hearts of the disciples. Yes, we may not have too many new friends here, but we, we are all believers. But that message can come to us the same today. We are to encourage every one of us believers, young and old, Jesus has risen. But this resurrection message is still relevant to us as believers. It must make the difference in our living. Exactly like what the, the songs that we have sang. Because he lives. We can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all our fears is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living. Just because he lives. So the woman has responded. How about verse 11 to 15? We see next the enemy's response. You, the chief priest responded with, with instruction to the, 
to the guts to go and tell. Tell the people that the, the disciples have come and stolen the body of Christ. Their response was to tell an outright lie. And to cook up an evil conspiracy. And to offer bright. And you see how uh, effective money is offering bright people will tell a, another story. So this story of the lie spread among the Jews to this day. So today, do not be surprised, brethren, that we have renounced people, educated uh, scholars, who still believe these lies. So, there will always be people who will deny the resurrection of Christ. If you think seeing is believing, it doesn't apply here. The Jewish leaders saw the empty tomb. There were many witnesses, those who were raised from the dead. Uh, they went around telling others about, the, about Christ. This walk among men for at least 40 days after the resurrection. This could not convince uh, the enemies of Christ. Today we will still have people who will deny the resurrection of Christ. But we must continue to tell the truth. We must not be like the guards and others. They went and tell, but a different story. They could be bought with money. Brethren, I hope you will not betray the resurrection of Christ for any money or any favors at all. Tell the truth. You are obliged by the truth. Because it's the truth that sets you free. In case this is the first time you hear this message of Christ's death and resurrection, I plead with you. Christ's death and resurrection means everything. It means he has conquered death, sin, and he has also promised new life with his resurrection power. We can come, put our trust and faith in Christ. Believers, be, believers should have this blessed hope in Christ and the future. We are reminded in that song, God sent his son and they call him Jesus. And he, he came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon. And that empty grave is to prove that our Savior lives. It's easy to see the woman's response and the the contrast of the evil uh, chief priest's response. How about our response 
if we claim that we are true believers of Christ today. Now, we are going to say, if we claim that we are true believers of Christ today, Notice in verse 16 to 20, it records the Great Commission. The scene is set there. The, the 11 disciples went to Galilee. And they met Jesus and they worshipped him there. Sadly, if you look at the verse carefully, some doubted. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Even Thomas initially doubted. It's, it's really hard to believe their unbelief. So it's a whole time, just a Hanachi, Shangxing Naka, just a Taman, thirty singly, but Shangxing Naka. When I read this first, I think some of them might be physically, visibly worshipping Christ. So I'm a kind of Kalan Haman Shok, Kanta Haman, she's a man who sing by Shangti. But in their minds, they could have doubted. They gave the impression they were worshipping Christ. But they concealed their doubts. Today can one of us can can one of us be seen worshipping Christ and yet be doubting in our hearts? Yes. 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 Outwardly worshipping with doubts. You are putting out a front. Let the message of Christ uh, remove every doubt that you have. And what, what did Jesus say to the disciples? Verse 18 to 20. 20 gave us the Great Commission. The, the, the woman was first told, go and tell. The, the enemies, the guards were told, also go and tell, but different story. But we also have a go and tell mission. We have the great commission that we must go and tell and make disciples. Without going and telling, how can we make disciples? It all begins with going and telling. Then we are able to make disciples, and that is clearly stated there, is followed by baptism. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What is baptism? It's a public confession of our faith in Christ Jesus. We confess we are sinners. We cannot save ourselves. We plead for God's mercy and the precious blood of Christ to cleanse us and make us right. And with that confession, we rest on the promised power of Christ's resurrection. We rest on the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So to us, the Great Commission also is a go and tell mission. We see that the Great Commission is not just limited to saving souls. So we see that the Great Commission Verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So, so we do not just tell the gospel. We also hope that through the telling of the gospel, 
saints, believers are edified. There's an edification of believers. We also want them to be instructed in the word so that they can come, remember the Lord's uh, and and have communion. And having accepted the Lord, they must be led to the point of making a public confession. So the whole the whole commission is going to tell the gospel, leading them to Christ, teaching, edification, and growing and and that's the cycle. So we must fulfill this great commission. The world has already seen several earthquakes. Of course, the earthquake at uh, Syria and Turkey is still fresh in our minds. Do you know that the Bible also predicts there will be more earthquake in the days to come? There will be a final earthquake just before Jesus comes again. Uh, Zechariah 14, 1 to 10 talks about the day of the Lord coming. There will be upheaval in the Holy Land. Uh, a final earthquake at the Lord's return will split the mouth of olive. You will uplift Jerusalem on its side. There will be a shaking of the earth. My friend, it may be too late when that day comes. It may be too late because the great and terrible day has come. As believers, we must sense the urgency to go and tell. So Yes, that day of the final earthquake, we cannot be guaranteed that we will be there. So we cannot be guaranteed that we will be there. Our dear loved ones may have perished. So go and tell with urgency. The resurrection of Christ must make a difference for us. For without the resurrection of Christ, our preaching, our belief, our living will all be totally in vain. That's what Paul says. First Corinthians 15, 14 to 20. Verse 17. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, useless, and you're still in your sin. Those who have fallen asleep in Christ will have perished. Then we will have been most miserable. How are you living your life today? How does the resurrection of Christ, or what does it mean to you? Does it make any life-changing impact on you? The song that we have sang, Because He Lives, is a good reminder that as we strive on as believers saved by grace, we have to Face tomorrow. Not only the tomorrow, but the future to come. That song speaks of the, also the reality of the struggles in life. Uh, 
But it gives us one assurance that the Lord is helping us. And how does he help us? Because he lives. It says, and then one day we'll cross the river. And then our war and struggle with pain will be over. Then we know what true victory over death is. We will see the lights of glory. We will reign with him. All because he lives. Our fear is gone. He holds the future. Life is worth living. Because he lives. Isn't this song meaningful? But we will never experience, be able to experience it if someone has not first go and tell us. If nobody has told us, we will still be dead in sin. But we have heard the gospel, now we live and can face each day. It, we have been told the gospel. Now is our time to go and tell. We tell the truth. The truth of the resurrection of Christ. I know of no other faith, no other leaders of any other religion that dare to claim I am the way, I am the truth, the life, I am the resurrection of life. And this is the truth that we must hang on to. This is the glorious message that Christ indeed is the way, the truth, and the life. And his resurrection of life. The Jewish chief priests and the hardened hearts were prepared to tell a lie. You see, for a lie, they were prepared to give everything. But now we are telling you to go and tell not a lie, the truth. What are you prepared to tell the truth? And we must tell it to the nations around, the people around. Let, let us believe it with all our hearts. Let us rise to declare to all, go and tell the great story of Christ's death and resurrection. Because he lives, and be, we have a story to tell to the nation. Shall we do that?